Uh, this was definitely big. Definitely wanted to get this one before we go into conference play. You know, I got a tough one down in New Mexico, so I think we're really just, you know, each and every game just getting a little bit better at everything we're trying to do. RJ, um, it seems like you start out with a lot of fire. Like, pretty much every game this season, you've really been attacking immediately. Has that been part of the game plan to, to kind of get things going inside early with you? or? Um, just uh, being around good players, you know, all my teammates, you know, trust me and we trust them. So, you know, it doesn't start without, it doesn't start with me, it starts with them first off. So yeah, they keep helping me and not, uh, giving, me, giving me the ball, trusting me and I'm scoring it. So it's my teammates first. But as coach said, like, get it into RJ early or, you know, is that just kind of the way it's worked out? Um, just them trusting me. Uh, they trust, we do this every day in practice. You know, they're trusting me a lot more as the time goes on. So if it's just working. You seem to interact with the crowd quite a bit. I see you, you know, smiling for little kids, giving people handshakes. Uh, how does, you know, kind of interacting in that way with the crowd help your game? Uh, it's just, you know, fun, you know, just being able to interact with the crowd. I mean, they, you know, like I said, spend their money to come watch us play and support us all year long. So just definitely, you know, to show them the love and respect, you know, that they deserve. We found out earlier this week that you guys got invited to um, the Orlando tournament next year. RJ, you won't, you'll be graduated. Derek, we don't know what you're going to do yet, but what does that invite mean to you, um, being invited to that Orlando tournament next yeah, year? Yeah, it's, it's huge, definitely. Um, and seeing the field, you know, definitely I think shows just the respect that I think Boise State basketball is starting to, you know, garner. So um, it's definitely a great field, and we're excited for it next year. I mean, Derek, you can, you kind of took over in that second half, like a 14-6 run. You like you accounted for almost all the points there. Were you kind of feeling it there? Were you wanting to get some separation, how close it was? Kind of take me through that stretch you had. Uh, yeah, definitely. I think it was just kind of that, that limbo point in the game, you know, kind of, you know, who's going to, you know, go and take it. And I just felt, uh, you know, just wanted to, you know, get in ball screens, make plays for myself and my teammates, and just, you know, try and extend the lead. Because defensively, I think we were really good today. Um, only holding, I think, to like, like under 60, so that was really good. So I just wanted to kind of, you know, make that separation on offense, too. You, uh, you and George were in a little bit of foul trouble there at the end. Uh, how does Coach handle that with you guys, knowing that you're, you know, the two main guys playing inside and defending inside? You know, how do you guys handle that when, when it gets close? Uh, we work on that in practice, uh, just in case me and him do. So we have different scenarios, we have different lineups for it. So we're, it's not ever a surprise. We're always, uh, we're always ready for it. <laughs> I know that you don't keep a track of a lot of your stats, but you know, as Brandon mentioned, you were you know kind of messing with a triple double here, um, and the only other person who's ever done that is Chandler. Um, you know, what did you learn from watching him that maybe has, in some ways, contributed to the ability to follow in his footsteps? Man, just have? just everything. I know from just kind of day one being here, he he really took me under his wing and you know helped helped me along, taught me what it meant to work and. You know, just things out on the court, little things, stuff like that, which he didn't really have to do for me, you know, when I first started out here. So I appreciate him a lot. We still keep in contact a lot, and he helps me out. So, Well, Coach, uh, three straight wins. These guys seem to be getting on a roll and really finding their confidence. What do you attribute to that? Well, you know, we got good senior leadership. They've, these guys have a lot of grit. I mean, you know, we scored 80 points tonight and didn't make shots. So that they were sticking with the plan. They, you know, I think two weeks ago, when they missed shots, they didn't stick with the plan. And tonight, what you saw was they did, and they, you know, they got to the free throw line a lot. We drew a lot of fouls, and you know, that's kind of becoming something that we're good at. And and that kind of kept us, you know, five, six, seven, eight points up. And then when we started making the shots, that's when it took off a little bit. But uh, you know, we, uh, like I said, to score eighty points against their, their solid defensive team and, and score 80 points against them uh, without making, making a lot of shots is, is good. RJ Williams it really seems to go to work immediately in these yeah. games. You know, you get that ball inside to him and, and he's do, very good at drawing fouls lately, it seems uh, like as well. Yeah. Well, he drew six and DA yeah. drew 10. Oh yeah, so, so, you know, is that kind of a game plan to, to get RJ going inside early and yeah, kind yeah. of we, we're play always off that? Looking, you know, we need to find him more, yeah, mm -hmm. we really do. And, our guys are, are going to keep working at that and keep getting better at it. And he, he drives a hard bargain, especially when he's sitting in the ball screen and rolling hard. And we give him a good pass. He, he, he goes and attacks the rim. What do uh, his hustle say? His yeah. hustle plays say about you know this team or, or kind of contribute to this team. For example, that put back. You know, he gets his own miss, puts it back, gets the foul. Yeah, you know, yeah, gets excited. Absolutely. Well, you know, we take a lot of pride in that. Not we have a word for it. I can't really say. Uh, we don't join the oh shoot club when mm -hmm. we miss. We just get back up on it as quick as we can and and uh, just keep sawing wood and keep playing and keep playing. That's that's kind of our thing. And um, this team's really buying into that. And, and like I said, they just kind of gritted some things out. And our defense was pretty darn good 
you know, over the course of the whole game and possession by possession. We had a few lapses here and there, but overall, I, I thought we played a pretty good defensive game. Coach, I mean, how much confidence is it you guys going Mount West? Because you guys only won three games in a row one time last season. Hmm. You've already done it. I mean, how much confidence is it well, we, you Well, we beat some good teams. Yeah. You know? I mean, we played some good teams. And we were trying to load it up a little bit before we went to conference because it's the first time in the history of the Mountain West that we have conference games this early. And it's the first time we've ever had a guy that we're getting eligible in a couple of weeks. So it's like a <laughs> little bit of a bad hop there because we could use another body. We're a little shorthanded underneath. And, um, uh, but we've got the mindset of, so what, now what? Uh, you know, we got that from Coach Pagano. And, something that we live by because hey it's what's in front of us and it's what next and you know by the way you get to go to the pit to open <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it wasn't enough just to do all that but now you get to go to the pit and play out in new mexico one of the best venues in college basketball and so we, we just got to embrace it and go down there and let the fur fly the Tenno start could you have asked for a better way to start this yeah, game? we came out great mm -hmm. and but again we, we we had about three or four wide open threes that we didn't make you know, so that kind of kept things tighter than maybe they could have been. But that, that was good for us because then you just got to work through some stuff and, and keep playing. You kind of mentioned this team kind of had to grit some things. Like there were a couple runs in the first half where UNC Wilmington looked like they were going to come back in, but, you know, Alston Williams had an answer. Yeah. Does that say a lot about your team? Are you guys yeah. able to weather, weather those storms, you know? And, and the experience of playing, A, a lot of good teams so far, and B, in a lot of close games helps you with that. So, you know, you just – you know, every team we played, BYU, Pacific, all those games, they made runs at us, we made runs at them, and our guys kept their poise, and I think you saw that tonight, that they made a, you know, they made some counter punches. They, they weren't just going to get down 10-0 and quit. You know, he's a good coach, and they're, you know, they're getting better. And uh, so they, they, they grinded us and made us defend, and, you know, they were, they were a solid team. I think by halftime, we'll have to look at the box again to be sure, but Austin had like 10 points, five boards, five assists. So, you know, he was kind of, he was flirting with maybe the second triple-double in program history tonight. What does that kind of say about the maturation of his game? Oh, yeah, point? and, and you know, it was almost a quadruple-double because he drew 10 fouls. <laughs> so good point. <laughs> that would have been pretty good. No, he's just, you know, he's a, and then I think he was a big key to that. You know, he had seven assists, no turnovers, and we didn't make shots. Right. He, he had, th we left three assists on the table for we got him, and, uh, and and we just didn't make him. He got him great shots. So, no, they, uh, they he, he's, he's the trigger of our offense, you know, as far as getting to the paint, getting guys shots, seeing over everything, finding Justinian in the corner, getting those guys some wide open looks. I saw in the game notes your 300th game, I think, tonight. Uh, uh, well, you know, does that kind of mean something to you? Yeah, it you does, know? because it's, you know, this – in this day and age in this sport it's hard to hang in there that long you know and uh, when I came here that was why I came here I wanted to be able to build a program and, and you, you can't build a program if you're not there for a while and um, you know so the, the yeah it, it was kind of a sh like a slap in the face like 300 games <laughs> and I think 298 of them have been close so it's, been, <laughs> it's probably aged me 20 years but uh, no, it's 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 an honor to be the coach that long, and you know it's neat for me. Like I always talk about, to have all you know, former players out there playing, former players coming back, alumni buying in, and you know, we just kind of built a new like wall of fame kind of thing in our locker room. That's really neat, and so that means a lot to me uh, to have that history here. And nice to get a win on number three hundred too, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, uh, no question.